Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'm going to be doing a short October and November wrap-up. October is really short because I didn't read anything in October, so that's that. And then November I only read two books, so I guess I'll just jump into those. Both of the books I read in November were library books, so I don't have either of them anymore. I gave them back to the library. The first book was Goodbye Things by Fumio Sasaki and I don't remember who the translator was and even when I looked on Goodreads and other places I couldn't find who the translator was. It goes through how Fumio Sasaki became a minimalist and it goes through the type of um, mindset and attitudes that you can adopt in order to become more minimalist um, and different tips, uh, practical tips about how to reduce your belongings and keep them reduced. Minimalism is something that actually really interests me. I'm not a minimalist uh, by any means, um, but it does really interest me and I actually really like the idea of having very few items and I like the idea of not having an excess of things. So I've read a few minimalist books um, so far and I have a lot of thoughts about the whole movement itself, um, positives and negatives, um, but it does really interest me. The thing I find though about minimalist books is that once you've read one, you've kind of read them all, there's not really much else to say about it, and I guess they just really vary on the attitudes towards um, getting rid of things and tips about how to think about discarding things. and tips especially to do with getting rid of sentimental items and how to think about that. I think that's really where you'll tend to find variation. I think a lot of the time people's idea about minimalism tends to be that it's just getting rid of everything unless you absolutely need it, but that's not really what I take from it. For me it's more about um, obviously you keep the things that you need, that's a no-brainer, and then the questions about things like sparking joy and questions that these books kind of give you to ask yourself is just about the items that you're not really sure about and I feel like that's really obvious and clear but I know I'll, I've, I've seen a lot of um, comments uh, sometimes where people are asking um, Questions that I would call, I guess, a bit silly, um, where it's like, well, what about my medication? That doesn't spark joy, and well, obviously you would keep that because that's something that you need, and that's clearly expressed in these books. But anyway, that's beside the point, and it's referencing a different book altogether. Like I said, I do think a lot of the content for these books can feel very repetitive, but I did get two major things out of this um, particular book and that's I mean all I can really ask for if I get one thing out of a book that stays with me I think that's good enough so the two main takeaways for me were uh, he says to discard anything that you cannot discuss with a passion and I really like that idea I'm not sure how much um, explanation this point needs it just kind of resonated with me and I like the idea of that and I feel like I'm probably going to use that going forward as if I come across anything that I'm not sure what to do with. And I think it, it can help build collections um, that are more personal to you and filled with a lot more actual uh, meaning, or at least that's how I feel. The second big takeaway um, I got, which again feels I guess kind of obvious maybe, but it's just to leave unused space empty. And I think there is a tendency, at least for me, um, if I clear out a space, um, I might think, oh, that's actually the perfect place to put this other stuff, or now I finally have a place to put blah. But actually, I think there is something really nice about just having those empty spaces, and it's kind of like having breathing room uh, physically. That, again, appeals to me a lot personally, so I'm happy with those two takeaways. It's maybe not anything new for someone who has already read about minimalism before, but um, it's if you enjoy that kind of content and just like reading that as like a relaxing sort of no-brainer, um, easy pickup, then I think yeah, you would like this book. And I think also um, if this was your first introduction to minimalism, it's probably a nice one to go with. I think. Um, the Marie Kondo book uh, is also a good starting point if you 
are just getting into minimalism and I don't think either one is better than the other. Um, it's just whichever one you pick up because again a lot of the uh, practical tips especially are going to be just kind of universal anyway. So yeah, um, I liked it and I would recommend it but also it's nothing special if you already know about minimalism. The second book I read in November was Confessions by um, Kenai Minato and translated by Steven Snyder. This one um, I was supposed to read for Women in Translation Week and obviously that didn't happen <laughs> and I've read it now in November. But whatever, that's fine, I got to it. This one is about a teacher whose daughter has died at school and it's been um, called an accident but she finds out that actually uh, two students in her class have murdered her child and she conducts a lecture on her last day of school before she retires and that kicks off everything else that happens in the book. I thought it was a really fun um, thriller, uh, mystery-ish kind of book I guess and I thought that the multiple perspectives worked pretty well in it. Um, however, I also thought that each character didn't really feel that different from the next so each chapter feels very like you're waiting until she gives you the clue or outright says who that character is because they all feel very very similar um, the voice feels the same in all of them they're all very flat all very emotionless all very um, pseudo objective about things all very pretend logical and I feel like um, that still works for the book, um, and it's mostly plot-driven, I suppose, rather than character-driven. And it felt a lot like an anime to me, which maybe made it more readable and more engaging because I was thinking of it in that way already. Some things just didn't weigh up to me, and maybe it's just a difference in my Western morals and ways of thinking and there was just a gap between those things perhaps I don't know but I just felt a bit like mm, that doesn't quite weigh up <laughs> to me uh, a lot of the time and also I thought for a book that was written in 2008 I found it surprising that these teenagers um, wouldn't think to google certain things like I don't think this is a spoiler to say and I'm gonna try to make it as unspoilery as possible but there's a point where two of the students think that they have contracted HIV and uh, one of them in particular is super worried about it but never once thinks, oh maybe I should Google this <laughs> and find out more about it and that to me just felt a little bit um, a little bit silly because I think if he had just done that um, it, it would have helped a little bit and maybe some other things wouldn't have happened, who knows. Um, and it's not as if um, websites and stuff aren't a thing in this world because there are cell phones, there are, um, one of the characters has a website and they do all this technological stuff. So it's not like that world is separate from the story in this book. So I just, I found that a bit like, eh, I don't know, but that was minor, so not a big deal. And it didn't hinder me from enjoying the book. Like I said, I did really enjoy it. And I'm now really curious to watch the film that was based on this book and apparently it was Oscar shortlisted or something like that, so it's probably really fun. Um, so I'm gonna check that out and I'm also very likely to pick up more work by Kinai Minato in future. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would, but I also think um, you do have to suspend disbelief a little bit more than usual I think at some points um, because I find that the logic at, at some points is just not super convincing but the story just kind of carries itself along and that that's fun to follow. So I realized before I picked up the camera to film this that I completely forgot to film my um, third quarter check-in for my bookish New Year's resolutions um, and now it's a bit late to do that, so I guess I'll just um, go over all the stats and everything like that uh, at the end of the year. Um, I think probably things will stay around the same as what they are now, um, because I don't know if I'll get through 
another book by the end of this year just because of how other things in my life are stacking up. But I'm really happy with what my stats are right now and I have achieved, I think, all of my bookish New Year's resolutions and I think all of my non-bookish New Year's resolutions pretty much as well. So it's a good year for me. And finally I just want to give a huge welcome to the new subscribers because I noticed um, a few new people subscribe to my channel now which is a little bit... Um, anxiety causing? I don't know. Um, a, a, like a, a little bit nerve-wracking. Uh, but, uh, nah, nah. but welcome and thank you for subscribing and uh, thanks for all of my uh, regular subscribers uh, for hanging on with me while things get a bit um, up and down uh, with my scheduling and stuff. I'm trying to keep to a good schedule but I'm finding that especially now as the days are so much shorter it's really hard to get time to film when daylight is actually good because in my house the lighting is just this is not interesting anyway thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time bye